let's solve some simple harmonic motion problems. So first off, these are our equations, right? This is basically all the same equation. For a pendulum, it's the length and the gravitational field that do the oscillating. And for a spring, a mass on a spring, it's the mass of the object and the spring constant of the spring, right? But if you look at these two formulas, they look exactly the same, right? So that's why we do these together, because they're basically the same thing, right? Just remember the uh, numerator in each case, the length of the pendulum and the mass of the spring, that's the thing that's doing the changing, and the denominator is the restoring force. Okay, so solve a couple problems. So first one, having landed on a newly discovered planet, an astronaut sets up a simple pendulum. So that's the first thing you do. You get to a newly discovered planet and you set up a pendulum. <laughs> the amplitude of oscillation is small compared to the length. What is the gravitational acceleration? All right, so I know I'm solving for g. So I'm doing a pendulum, right? So I'm going to write this down first so I know what equation I'm working with, right? Pendulum one. Okay, so I'm going to need period. Right? I'm going to have to do some algebra solve for g, right? But before I can do that, I need the period of the pendulum. And it gives me 120 oscillations or cycles in 446 seconds. Okay, so if I'm going to figure out what the period is, right? You could just guess and check, right? Because basically you're going to be dividing. So I do, do 120 divided by 446, or do I do 446 divided by 120, right? So I mean, you could just guess and check and plug in, right? But the easy way would be to think about what period means. Period is how many seconds for one cycle. So period is measured in seconds. So if I want this in seconds, 446 is going to have to be in the numerator, right? Because it'll be seconds divided by cycles. Seconds for one cycle. So it's going to be... 446 over 120. So let's do 446 over 120. And that gives me 3.7, yeah, about 3.72. equals 3.72 seconds. That's going to be my period. So good habit to be in is check your work, right? Make sure it makes sense. So if it takes 3.72 seconds for one cycle, and I do 120 cycles, I should be able to multiply those two numbers, 3.72 seconds for 120 cycles, well, I get the same thing, right? Get in the habit of checking your work, because if you mess up, you can fix it here, instead of like getting the wrong answer and having to go back and figure out what happened. Okay, so now let's go here and do some algebra. So there's two places people mess up when they're doing this, right? And we've talked about this in class, and I'm going to tell you again. So you can't just move g over here because it's in one it's in the denominator but two it's also under this radical right and then the second thing is when you do this and you get rid of that square root you gotta square the entire thing right so let me show you so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm trying to isolate g so i'm gonna divide by two pi to get rid of that to move it over to the other side right so now i have period of a pendulum over two pi equals square root l over g all right so now I can't just move g over yet, right, because it's still in the square root. So I'm going to square, and that's going to get rid of this. But when you come over here to square the other side, you can't just do that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get messed up, and you're only going to square the period, and it's going to end up wrong. You have to square the entire thing, because whatever you do to one side, you do to the entire other side. So you could do it that way, or, you know, if you want to be fancy, you could do period of a pendulum squared over 2 squared, which is 4, times pi squared. Same thing, right? I just find it easier to do that. So now I have period of a pendulum over 2 pi quantity squared equals L over G. So now if I'm solving for G, now I can just do some algebra trick. Well, basically I'm multiplying G over and then dividing, right? But algebra trick, if you're ever solving for the denominator, right, all you have to do is switch these two things, right? Anything over here. If I want to solve the thing in the denominator, I can just move this over here and move that under, right? Because this is like saying A equals B over C. So if I want to solve for C, I can multiply C over, and then I can divide A, and I end up with C equals B over A, right? C equals B over A. Same thing, right? So instead of, like, doing that, I just look at this and swap those two, right? So G is going to equal L over the period of a pendulum over 2 pi quantity squared. All right. So now let's go solve it. So I'm going to do in my calculator, right? So another process to learn. 
go step by step, right? So in my calculator, this is what I would do. I'd do the period, 3.72 divided by 2 pi. So 2 pi is 6.28, right? 3.14 times 2. Don't use the stupid pi button because for some reason it's going to mess up. I have no idea why I think it's order of operations. I don't know. Just use 3.14. So hit enter. Okay, there's that number. I'm going to square the entire thing. Hit enter. Now I'm going to do the length divided by that. So the length it said was 0.7 meters. So 0.7 divided by that number I got before. And that means G is 1.99. 1.99 meters per second squared. So, I don't know. They landed on a planet a little bit bigger than the moon. Our moon. Okay? But that's solving that. Okay, next problem. Mass of 25 grams attached to a certain spring. It makes 20 vibrations in 4 seconds. What's the spring constant? Okay, so I'm going to write... I'm trying to figure out spring constant, so I need the period of the mass on a spring, which is 2 pi square root of m over k. And I see grams, right? So immediately I'm going to write this down and say that I'm converting 0. 0.25 grams as 0. 0.025 kilograms, right? I'm going to do that right away so I don't forget it. And then same thing as last time, 20 vibrations in 4 seconds. So if it's 20 cycles in 4 seconds, I need to find how long it takes for 1 cycle. So seconds for 1 cycle. Right? So again, I'm going to do seconds divided by cycles. So that's 4 over 20. So 4 over 20 is, I don't know why I'm using a calculator, it's going to be 20%. 4 over 20 is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, so again, let's check. If it takes 0 0.2 seconds for one cycle, if I do 0 0.2 times 20, that gives me 4 seconds. Wow. Okay. So now I know my period. Now I can do my algebra. Uh, I want spring constant. So this is going to be the exact same process as when I solve for G, right? So I'm going to go through it and fast forward, but it's the same steps because I'm solving for the denominator. All right, so I moved over the 2 pi, and then I squared both sides, the entire side, to get rid of the radical. And then m over k, I can just swap k with this whole thing right here because that whole thing is all just a big constant because it's going to multiply out to one number. And I end up with this. And so now let's solve. So k equals, so I'm going to do the inside of here first. My period is 0 0.2 divided by 6.28. Square it. Mass 0 0.025 divided by that. And then hit enter. And that's my spring constant, 24 point, we'll call it 24.65. 24.65 newtons per meter. Okay, next problem. Body of a 1,275 kilogram car is supported on a frame by four springs. The spring constant of a single spring is that. Four people riding in the car have a combined mass of 255 kilograms. When driven over a pothole, frame vibrates. What's the period of vibration of the car? So this car is on four springs. So... I need to figure out one spring, right? Because I assume we're modeling this as four springs that all behave the same. So, let's just look at one spring, right? So let's see how much weight one spring would have and how one spring would behave, and that should give us our answer. So, the total mass, let's get that first. Because I know... I'm going to use period of a spring as 2 pi square root of m over k. Oh, I don't even have to do any algebra. So I just need the mass and the spring constant. Oh, and I got the spring constant right there. Wow. So total mass. I need to do that first. So the whole car is 1,275 plus the, poor, the four people, 255 kilograms. So 1,275 plus 255. That's my total mass of the car, 1,530 kilograms. Okay. So that's on four springs. So that means one spring has to hold up 1,530 divided by four. So let's take that and divide by four. 382.5. 382.5 kilograms. So one spring is holding that, right? Because that weight is being evenly distributed among four springs. Okay. 
oh, now it's easy. So let's just plug in and solve. So I'm going to say the period of a spring is 2 pi times the square root of the mass, which is 382.5 over the spring constant, 2 times 10 to the 4th. 2 times 10 to the 4th is what? 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, there we go. Square root of that. Okay. And so I get my period is 0 0.8, I'm going to call it 0 0.87 seconds.